Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. Welcome in. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is Winning Cures Everything. This is the NFC and AFC title game previews and spread picks. Uh, we've only got three NFL games left for this season. It's kind of crazy. It seems like it's going really fast. Am I crazy for that? No, I mean, you know, it's been a fun season, and it, it goes quickly like that. It definitely does. Uh, we've got the Titans and the Chiefs left. We've got the Packers and the 49ers. We're going to break down both games. Uh, it not, I, I don't know what to say much about them at this point, but we're going to break them down. We're going to figure it out. Uh, but before we do that, go over to winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. are over there. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We are on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave some nice comments. Tell us what you think about the games, what your pick is, what your predictions are for this weekend. Uh, we, I'm curious to see uh, what everybody thinks is going to happen here. I, uh, I've got a feeling I know which way people will lean on both games, but... I mean, there's a reason that four teams are left here, so anybody's got a shot to do just about anything at this point. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books. You can find more information on those and all of the other wonderful things that are going on down in Tunica over at tunicatravel.com. Let's go ahead and fire in game number one, 2.05 p.m. Central Standard Time. On CBS, the Titans at the Chiefs. They're going up to Arrowhead to Kansas City. Chiefs are a seven and a half point favorite. The total is 52 and a half. Chiefs defensive lineman Chris Jones might be out. That is not a good thing when you're going up against somebody like Derrick Henry. Um, these two teams played in week 10, and the Titans won 35 to 32. It was Mahomes' first game back. He was 36 out of 50 for 446 yards and three touchdowns in that game, and they lost. Now, part of the reason why they lost, Derrick Henry had 23 carries for 188 yards and two touchdowns in that game. So, they will, the Chiefs will allow you to run the football. But the Titans will allow you to throw the football as well. So, what the Titans don't need to have happen in this game, and this is my, my biggest point here, and the only one that I really wrote down for it, you cannot let the Chiefs jump out early. Because if you do that, they are going to bring everybody at Ryan Tannehill. And if they do that, Tannehill has not played great the last couple of weeks. No. They haven't needed him to. That's right. Um, he hasn't made killer mistakes. But if they start bringing pressure, if they find a way to get to him and kind of rattle him and they're down a couple of scores, that's where it could get a little bit hairy. Uh, in that first game, he only threw the ball 19 times. Yep. 12 of those targets were to either Derrick Henry or their tight ends. 12 of 19 passes were to Derrick Henry or the tight ends. I think you're going to need a little bit more than that this go-round. I, I agree. Um, d how do you see this breaking down? What? Where do you... Man, I, I, I think Tannehill is the biggest thing in this game. I'm trying to figure out, do I think the, the Titans can win this game or not? I think absolutely they can win it. I mean, they've beaten the Chiefs, what, three straight times? And they don't play them all the time, but they've yeah. won two straight, or they, they won their last playoff game at Arrowhead with Marcus Mariota at quarterback. Um, Derrick Henry can run on this team, but if you get down early and you have to go away from the run, then you have problems. They the Titans aren't built to come back uh from twenty one nothing, from fourteen to nothing, really. So you've got to make sure that you come out and, and hit them in the mouth first. So if the Titans have any shot in this game, they gotta take advantage of the line of scrimmage early. Agreed. But the question is, can they do it? Can they? So is the in, immediate knee jerk reaction is is nobody's been able to stop Henry so far in the playoffs. Right. But also, no running back has ever had three games like he's had. So at what point in time is he going to continue to do things that have never been done before, or is he going to have an off game? 
what the other side of this, so we all just assume that Pat Mahomes can't be stopped. I do think that the Titans have a little bit better uh, secondary, a better defense than the Texans did. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy because when you look at the, the Texans' talent. But, but they're going to have to be a hell of a lot better than the Texans were. Uh, agreed. But that, but what I'm saying is you got Rashawn Evans, you got Simmons, you got all these guys, and they are playing really, really well right now. They are going to have to continue to play well. Mahomes, who we talked about, you know, people think that he is unstoppable. He had not had a game where he had three touchdowns right. before this one. Dating all the way back to the first time they played the Titans, which was week 10. So he had more than a month of games where he was, okay, does he revert back to that in a pressure situation? Or? This you know, is the one game I have no feel for whatsoever. That's I, I, I don't see the Chiefs blowing them out in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Because I think even if the Chiefs get up by two scores, the, the Titans can – slug their way back and hold the ball long enough to where they just don't get enough possessions to, you know, to, to just really drum them. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem would be Tannehill making mistakes. Correct. That's the one thing that cannot happen in this game. You cannot have a Tannehill interception. The, you can't muff a punt. Now the you guy and the guy that y- he's yet to do anything in the playoffs. AJ Brown is the guy that carried them through the regular season because was Henry nervous. wasn't the guy in the regular season. In that first, it game, was Brown that got them into this plot spot, this playoff spot. It the 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 thing that sets up Derrick Henry to be able to run, or at least it did from week seven all the way through, was the big playability of Tannehill going to A.J. Brown, going to guys like that. In this spot... You just think defenses are taking him away? I don't know. When they played in Week 10, A.J. Brown had four targets and only caught one pass. I think it was like 12 yards, something like that. Not anything major. But he had four targets out of the 19 and only caught one pass. You're going to have to do more than that. You know, like this is... Tyreek Hill went... Insane. He had what ten catches for yeah, 160 yards. Yeah, 160 yards yeah. Um, so I, you, you just you got to make sure that you stay within striking distance in this game. The only thing that could keep the Titans from winning this game is early mistakes. Because if you get down early, then that's basically ball game. If you can keep this within a one score game or even have a lead, and you let Derrick Henry run on them, I. They can absolutely win this game. I don't Damn. think they are scared of this team whatsoever. No, you're probably right. And so the the Chiefs have a a Tennessee problem of kind of the same way that they have a uh, a Pittsburgh problem, where it doesn't matter how bad the Steelers are, the Steelers always find a way to beat the Chiefs. It, it's kind of turned into that with the with the Titans for whatever reason. I, the, I think this is the the kind of team or the one team that the Chiefs did not want to see in the AFC title game, which I know is crazy. It's a six seed. Tennessee has really has no business being here, right? And yet... They beat the Patriots. They beat the Ravens. Yeah. If they beat the Chiefs, they've beaten the three best teams in football. Well, they, they've beaten all four division winners in the AFC yeah. in the last four games because they beat the... Te- and I understand the Texans were sitting everybody. I get that, but... A win's a win, and they won at Houston, at New England, at Baltimore, and then they would win at Kansas City. So is it out of the realm of possibility? Absolutely not. Uh, I'm going to roll Titans plus 7.5 because I think it'll be a a tight game. Would it surprise me if the Chiefs come out and beat them by two touchdowns, three touchdowns? It wouldn't surprise me. I don't think anything in this game would surprise me. Yeah, this is the one that I just... my official pick is Titans plus seven and a half. Uh, I ain't going money line either direction. I, I think I think this will stay a touchdown game. And I'm you went four and zero last week. Yeah, I did pretty well last week. Um, I went three and one. I I don't like having to put all of my trust into Ryan Tannehill playing the best he's ever played in his life, and yet. The last two weeks, 
has thrown for less than 100 yards. They have not needed him whatsoever, really. And like obviously he's he had to make some big throws at the end of the New England game, but that was to run clock. That wasn't to score. You gonna have to score here. Yeah, so he, no matter how great they played against New England, they still only scored fourteen points. Yeah. And and against he wasn't the main factor. No. Against the Ravens. No. Uh, the Ravens gave him short fields multiple times. Derrick Henry threw a touchdown pass. Uh, you know, like they they did good stuff, but. You know, <laughs> I don't know what he's got. Oh, he's got my bottle. Oh, is that yours? That's yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Sorry about that. My dog is destroying things. It's all good. Now, bring your ass. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you got to give a pick. You got to give a pick. I'm I'm gonna. I think I think I'm going with you. Going Titans plus seven and a half. I think I am. I think. I think that's wrong. This I think I'm okay with. I this feels like I felt like before the playoffs started I I my I mean I already have a a, par, a parlay on the the uh, 49ers winning the AFC and the um Chiefs winning the NFC. Yeah. So and that being the Super Bowl matchup it I wouldn't like it wouldn't surprise me if if the Titans win. It, it wouldn't su- like I said, there's nothing that would surprise me. I, it wouldn't surprise me if this comes down to a field goal. I hate this is the early game because if I get the 49er win, I would probably play the Titans' money line. As, then a, I, as a hedge. Because then I could hedge. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, this is really strange. It, it's weird. It's, uh, I mean, you, you've got a six seed that has already beaten – the now, one seed if and the, the Chiefs, three seed. If the Chiefs beat them, get up early and get up often and beat them, yeah. I can get Patrick Mahomes for four touchdowns at plus 376. Whew. Three touchdowns is only plus 110. Still not laying juice, but still. No, I mean, you you still getting more than even odds back. But 376. I know he hadn't had a four-touchdown game. Already. I get that. But it's the playoffs, and it's different. Yeah, it's definitely that. It's different. That's that's the that's the. It's almost like I could all I could kind of play a couple of different bets, and then the whole wash. Yeah, you know, I could take the Titans, and I could take this because if they're going to cover the seven and a half, they're going to do it with him throwing the football. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, that's that's the way I feel. Yeah, I don't think there's any way I win both those games. I don't think he gets four touchdowns and they don't cover though. No, I don't think so. That's not if he gets four then, touchdowns. They're covering. That's all they're covering. Yeah. yeah, I think they're covering. But seven and a half, like that. Ha- I like the hook there. I like the hook. Um, but I will say this: typically, like, at least it feels like this. I don't have any numbers to back it up. I feel like whenever I bet seven and a halfs, the the favorite typically covers that seven and a half. When I when I bet the opposite direction, when I bet the dog, but I mean this go round, like I, it was Titans nine and a half last week. And I, I liked the Titans in that game. Um, this is a little bit different circumstance, but I mean the Titans have shown that they can beat these guys. Yeah, they have. They really, really have. And their game plan is spot on: hold the football, run the football, don't make the mistake, and don't let them have the ball. Yeah. Don't yeah. let Brady have the ball. Don't let Lamar. Have, you know how Brady can't beat you if he's sitting on the sidelines. You know how Lamar can't beat you if he's sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. Now the defenses did amazing things to slow those guys down and shut them down. Also, no, don't get me wrong. The but Ravens even, still had 520 yeah. yards of offense. They still ran 92 yeah, plays. That was very much a but, bend, but don't break though. They still exactly. they still didn't score a lot. But it, you know, it's one of those things where the defense made plays. Your offense is keeping you in the game because you're not having to play. One of the best ways to play good defense is to not play defense. Yes. That's so true. that that philosophy is going to be available to him. Yeah, um, you you got to get a got to get a fast start. You cannot be. They they need to get the ball before half. They don't. They know this is no defer situation. No, nope. they need to win the coin flip and take the football. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You can't go down seven nothing here. Not not with the way that this team's built. Um, let's go ahead and move into game number two, and this is the Sunday afternoon game. Uh, 5.40 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on Fox. The Green Bay Packers go out west to Levi Stadium in Santa Clara to face the San Francisco 49ers. 
Same line here, seven and a half. Uh, total is 45, so a whole touchdown less in this game. Um, in week 12, the 49ers beat the Packers 37 to 8. Uh, Aaron Rodgers in that game, 20 out of 33, which sounds pretty good, except he only had 104 total yards passing. He had one touchdown, but the yards per pass, 3.2. That ain't good. Nope. That's terrible. Um, the way that the Packers can beat the 49ers, and, and don't get me wrong, that, that Week 12 matchup means nothing here. Um, the 49ers allowed 124.2 rushing yards per game. That is the eighth most in the NFL. Not not great. No. Not great. So that defensive line that they've got that, that we've been harping on all season, they're great at a pass rush. I was about they're to say, they're built, they're built to beat a pass rush. The Packers need Aaron Jones to play big in this game. Uh, if, if the Packers do win, it, it'll be because of uh, Jimmy G. It'll be because they have found a way to confuse him. To You, you need him to make mistakes. And he will. Stay in this. Um, He's going to give you the ball. Well. He has almost every game this year. Yeah. I mean, it, what did he have against the Vikings? Was it two turnovers? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, nope. Well, it might have been a fumble, but he definitely only... What, one interception? Yeah, just one interception. One interception, and then I think it was one fumble. Bless you. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I think it was... One more time. There you go. <laughs> I think it was one fumble, one intercept, but it was two turnovers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they will, they will probably do that. The one thing that the Packers do have going for them, one, they've got the much more experienced quarterback. Uh, but the other side of it is their defense pretty good against the run. And San Francisco builds everything off of being able to run the football. Now, in that first mat uh, matchup, things went screwy early and very quickly. And the 49ers were able to run the football, but a lot of it was the the game went sideways on Green Bay early. So I think this is a situation where the stats lie, and the stats lie badly. Okay. When Green Bay played teams – that could run the football well, which they didn't play many because not a lot of teams ran the football this year. What, and they didn't play a lot of good teams. Yes. But, like, even the Chargers are a bad team. Chargers know how to run the football. Yeah. They're built to run the football and because they've got a, an old man quarterback and, the, you know, whatever. Um, when they played the 49ers, they, the teams that they shut the run down on were teams that couldn't run the ball on anybody. The Bears didn't run the ball on anybody. You know why? Because nobody's afraid of Mitchell Trubisky. Agreed. You know, the Lions didn't run the ball on hardly anybody. Like, they shut down great run. I mean, the Cowboys, they got Ezekiel Elliott. They got a great offensive line. But I can't explain why they just chose to not run the football this year. But they didn't run on anybody. And that's the situation that I'm at. Is I think Kyle Shanahan's offense and his zone blocking scheme is to a point where you could be the greatest run defense in, in, in the game. I, I think they're running on you. I just do. I could be wrong on that, and Green Bay might shut them down, but but I absolutely think I'm losing my ear. <laughs> that uh, I I think I think that they can run on anybody. Green Bay held San Francisco. <laughs> Luckily, everybody can actually see the dog. Now. I know they can see him. They now. can actually see Maui. Um, Green Bay held the 49ers to only 112 yards rushing on 22 attempts. Now, that was still five yards in, per attempt uh, in that game. The biggest problem was Jimmy G was 14 out of 20 for 227 yards. I mean, he averaged over at almost 10 yards a pass. Yeah. And, I mean, you can't win like that. I mean, it's just impossible. So My, my issue with that situation, though, is I would like to see when he was throwing the football because I know early in that game they didn't open the game throwing. And was he able to get those passes because – the run game just opened up all those passing lanes. Well, I'll tell you this. I remember that game, and I think they just gashed them early. And they well, gashed I mean, they them were, off. They were up 7 nothing to start off with yeah, because, it, like, Green Bay got the ball and fumbled the ball on their own two-yard line, and San Francisco's up 7 nothing. Yeah. And then a, a couple more drives go by. It's 10 to nothing. Uh, it's 13 to nothing, And then Green Bay goes, you know, three and out, and it is a three – play 61 yard drive and 
let's see, it was Debo Samuel yep. uh, from Jimmy Garoppolo for 42 yards to make it 20 to nothing, and that's before the half. Like, it was 23 to nothing at the half. Like, they they hit massive plays. If you're Green Bay, you can stop the run, but you can't make the mistakes. That's right. Like, that's, that's right. the biggest thing. That's right. What do you think here? You Ryan Rodgers? Man, I think that San Francisco has the most complete team left in the playoffs right now. I agree. But, yeah, I think this I is going to be a close game. I thought they started the year or started the playoffs with the most complete team. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I I think I'm going to roll Packers plus seven and a half. I, I think that the 49ers will find a way to win this game, but the 49ers towards the end of the season found a way to win close games. Right? I mean, they beat Arizona by three. They beat Seattle by five. They beat, you know, and, yeah, they whipped up on the Vikings last week, but you and I both have talked about that game. Yeah, but, I mean, Uh, we also think that Green Bay has been fraudulent all year. And at some point in time, they play a good team and they didn't get the butt whipped. I thought they showed up well last week, but I also think that that Seattle team was running on fumes. That Seattle team was fluky as hell. Yeah. they, they They were running on fumes. I, uh... I do really like this Packers defense. Like, I, I think this is the first time in seven, eight years that the Packers have built their team on something other than Aaron Rodgers. And the problem the is, is pressure, o- offensively, they have one man, and it's not Rodgers. Well, I mean, they, they got Adams and they got Jones. And they they are set up on offense almost the same way that the Titans are. There's just no way on earth – that the 49ers are not going to be ready for Adams. They're just not. He's not going to be wide open the entire game like he was against Seattle. I have no idea what the defense was doing in Seattle. I don't know. Well, Seattle doesn't have the uh, the secondary that the 49ers do. But he, it, um, what even the secondary situation? Like, they were running this weird zone, and he was just finding a hole sitting down in it and getting it. You know how many, uh, how many possessions there were in the second half of that uh, – I bet, of that Green Bay San Francisco. I bet game. almost none. I bet that was one of the quickest games we've had all year. Oh, the was, Green Bay San Francisco game. Yeah. Oh no, I thought you were talking about the playoff game last. No, year. Green Bay San Francisco earlier this year. There were only six possessions. San Francisco went three and out. Green Bay had a thirteen, and that was that took two and a half minutes off. Green Bay had a thirteen play, sixty five yard drive that took eight and a half minutes. After that, to make it twenty three to eight, and then immediately. San Francisco turns back around, has a two-play, 75-yard drive that took less than a minute. And, I mean, it was a, let's see, George Kittle pass from Jimmy Garoppolo, 61-yard touchdown. Like, See, there's as great as that defense is, there's nobody that can guard Kittle. I agreed. And if they can run the ball and he can get open, then, then those other guys, Debo, those other guys are going to get open. Green Bay, after that touchdown to make it 30-8, Green Bay had a 12-play, 44-yard Six and a half minute drive that ended on downs. This is the issue with them, like, though. If they get down early, they can't come back. Yeah, they they're not the Green Bay of old. No. I mean, you talked about Tennessee not being able to come back if they get down early in their game. Uh, hell, this team, Tennessee, this is, has a way more explosive offense than this team, which is crazy to think about, isn't it? And, and at I, least Tennessee's I, playing a defense that has played much better than previous years, but they're still vulnerable. Yeah. Green Bay's going up against what's probably the best defense left in the playoffs. I think I'm not going Packers. And we're also and we're I'm also talking about a coaching matchup where come on, dude. Shanahan come against, on. Uh, against Matt LaFleur. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm taking I'm I know taking I'm selling him. I'm taking 49ers minus seven and a half. But I've been a Kyle yeah. believer since day one. That's the only guy. Cleveland's had a bunch of guys that came through their system that could have gotten the job there. That left. He's the only guy that got out the door that I'm mad about. He's the only guy that ever left the building that I'm mad about. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, you uh, you're on the Forty Nine ers. Oh yeah, this is the one I feel I feel great about. Yeah, that makes sense. I really like, do. When, when you really break, down I felt the great about it last week. I, you know, I is and you know how much we like the Vikings. It just didn't matter. This is the best team in the playoffs. Yeah, I, this uh, team should win the Super Bowl. You know what's crazy? The 49ers would probably rather – I know it's weird to say they'd rather see the lesser seed team. They're built to beat the Titans. They're going to struggle with the Chiefs. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. 
Um, a guy like a great quarterback can cut them up. There was a. But if you're not a, a great quarterback, you can't cut them up. There was an article by like done on ESPN about advanced analytics, and the guy for Green Bay. Let's see, what's the guy's name? Zadarius Smith. All right, so they've got a a sack analytic that the way it's explained is it is the one that gets the pressure first. Yes. He leads the NFL with 20 of them. So that's their sack analytic. It is the one that causes the disruption, and he leads the NFL. Okay. Um, If Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith can get pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo and force him to make mistakes... And he can. He's above. He's not above that. Agreed. Uh, if they can do that, then they got a shot in this game. I just have a hard time. I have a hard time listening to all those stats because I know two of those games were against Mitchell Trubisky. And you and I could get pressure against him because he's terrible. Yeah, he definitely is. He's really bad. The other two games they got, they were against Kirk Cousins, who holds the football forever. And ever and ever and ever. So, yeah, you're going to get pressure against those guys. Garoppolo and then whatever had, the hell the Lions had. Garoppolo had two touchdowns and zero picks in that game. The 49ers had one fumble but did not lose it. Jimmy G is the the one that fumbled it. He did fumble. He just got it back. Yeah, he got That's it. That's why I didn't show up on my stats. And so, yeah, that's it. But through the season – he has made mistakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so long as Green Bay is not the one to make mistakes, Green Bay can absolutely hang in this game. True. Well, but yeah, if they I, if they play a perfect football game, then sure, they can win the game. I don't but that's the, play a perfect but football But that's game. the problem. I don't want to bet on the team that has to play a perfect football game just to have a chance to win. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a world in which Green Bay plays a perfect football game, they still lose this game. Yeah. I mean it'd be by field goal. Be by last second, whatever, but they could play almost perfect and still lose. If, the 49ers, if the 49ers could play average. Perfect. Oh, they play for every they win. Yeah. They win 100% of the time. Going away. Yeah. That's that's why I just don't want to be in that spot. That makes sense. The Chiefs could play a perfect football game and Derrick Henry just take the air out of the ball and they still find a way to lose. That game's different. That's why I'm struggling so much with that game. And I guarantee you, we record on Tuesdays. By Sunday kickoff, my mind will have changed five or six times. Yeah. yeah. I will not make a wager on this game. I might get a bad line by then, but I won't make a wager on this game until we're way closer to game time. I'm going to tell you this. But the, I, but the 49ers game, you're all in on the 49ers. I'm in now. Yeah. I'm in now. Um, I, I, What I'm probably going to end up doing is teasing the 49ers game in one of these sides. That makes sense. That's probably what I'm going to do. But the downside is is I don't know which side yet. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And if I think the Titans can win, I'm just going to do a money line parlay with the 49ers and the Titans. That, that would make sense. That would pay out the best. That works. All right. Anything else we need to hit on? No, man. I think I'm – listen, this is this is championship weekend. Yeah. Yeah, we got uh we got two more weeks of NFL stuff to talk about, and then uh and then once the Super Bowl is done, obviously we'll talk off season and whatnot. But you know I'm gonna miss the Super Bowl for the first time. I know you're in gonna my be life. in Disney. In my life, that's that's probably why the Patriots didn't make it. I know. I they bet. Said, I, I bet it is my fault. Bill this, said, "You know what? Chris isn't coming. Chris fine. Chris ain't gonna be watching at home with his Tom Brady doll and whatnot. Yeah. Like he said, we we'll skip it this year. If if Tom leaves, I don't know what I'm doing with my doll. My I, action my action figure." Hey, listen, you talk about that, but last night I had ambulance and trinkets and, 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 uh, and, and yeah. Yeah, but LSU's um, tal- not voodoo. Talismans man. everywhere. And, and it worked. You know what's cool? Everything I had was given to me, just like the Tom thing. Yeah. They're all gifts that people gave me over the years, just little knickknacks. And I had them all lined up on my table. How many people you have watching the game? Just two, just Fletchy and, and, and Trey. Okay. Okay. So Trey was a throw in. Usually Fletchy's my my comfort buddy. 
That makes sense. I bring him around when I'm when I'm stressed out. <laughs> he's, he's like my service dog. He keeps me he keeps me company. Keeps me company. He's the uh, the emotional support animal. That's right. I need him. Yeah, I definitely need an emotional support person. I care way too much about this stuff. It's stupid. It's so uh, stupid. I can understand. That's it. you. I remember you got really mad at me the first year that Alabama lost to Clemson because you, you didn't care, and, and I, I didn't I didn't let it. Phase me. You didn't. You. We literally did a podcast five minutes later, and it. I. It seemed like nothing in your life had changed at all. And I don't know what that's like. I don't know how to go through life like that. Well, it, part so, of it. Part of the anger is a little bit of envy because I know it's. Too, I lay down in bed, woke my wife up, and and I couldn't sleep. I'm just I'm breathing heavily, and I'm, I'm my brain is moving a mile a minute. And we had a small conversation about. How pathetic is this that you're married to somebody who's 37 years old? I have a great life. I have a great business. I have a great family. And you let sports affect you. And I let, just not all sports, but a few things emotionally, like not just change. Yesterday I was useless. I I actively went out of my way to do nothing productive. I guarantee you. At all. If Orgeron wins like two or three more national championships over the next five, six years, uh, you think I'll get no? Because the Patriots have been in Super Bowls and that didn't matter. Really? We've been in nine Super Bowls See, and when we lost the Eagles Super Bowl, we didn't punt and I lost my mind. Yeah, I do remember that. I was that's, devastated. That's, that's the last time you let me watch a, a Patriots. Yeah, game you, you're not allowed it over anymore. Which is crazy. You're, you're I no wasn't longer. Even the bad one. You're no no no. Cameron will never be allowed back over again. <laughs> ever 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 to watch a game that matters to me. That's I I I behaved. I know. I sat back no, you and, were great. You're uh, great. But yeah, it, it was just bad luck. That's but no, it, for me, like the the Alabama. And I fully stuff, believe that is the reason we lost. By the way, I <laughs> we didn't I'm just as superstitious as you. It's my fault. It's That's, all my I've, fault. I've had a Trent Richardson jersey. Yeah, uh, that I've had for it's since the yeah. 2011 national championship game, and I wore it the weekend of the so I, I wear it for every Alabama game, but I wore it to Tuscaloosa when we got beat by LSU this year. And then I didn't wear it the week after. And we were playing Western Carolina, something like that, and had a fantastic game and whatever. Um, and then I wore it again the next week, and we lost to a, in that Mississippi State game. And I haven't worn the jersey since. So the jersey is retired. That's uh, good. That's very rich. I, but I but I got to find the new, new thing. A new thing now. Yeah. yeah, a new thing. So I almost went to an alumni party. For the national championship yeah. game, and the day of, I was my anxiety was too high. That that, that was not happening. Oh, but what I was saying is, oh yeah, like, sure. Before, um, before I, this this Alabama run started, that's how I was. Hmm. Like every game was life or death, and it, it was before Saban. Yeah. So we were awful. Just imagine how rough I was be like I was to be around in the first few years of Saban. I was pretty rough to be around yeah. during ball games. I could not watch games with anybody else because I I did not know how to act. I could not control my emotions. My in my situation, the reason I watched them by myself, it's a me problem, not anybody else problem. Yeah. But I'm mature enough, as immature as I am, I'm mature enough to know I have this problem and I shouldn't leave the house with it. Yeah. I don't take that crap out in public. I do it alone in in the comfort of my house. My wife knows to hide our children. And leave me to my little little sunroom yeah, to your area and my my area and you know the dog is allowed to come in and out and that's kind of it. There you go. I when when it's <laughs> bedtime and I gotta kiss them goodnight. Wait until there's a break in the game. I run in, I say goodnight, and I'm getting out. And then you back out. So yeah, there you go. All right, official picks for the NFC and AFC title games. Uh, we both have the Titans plus seven and a half here. Uh, now remember, we're making this on Tuesday night, so the line might change, but. This is the way that we're looking at it. If you can get seven and a half, I think these or even lines. Seven, I think these lines are gonna. I don't think that line is. I don't know that either of these lines are moving much. They, they may not. They may not. But it is Tuesday. We still got yeah, a we, whole lot. Yeah, we we can't predict anything. Um, but we both got the 49ers minus seven and a half. We got the Titans plus seven and a half. Um, I think the matchup everybody wants is probably. I think the matchup the networks want is Green Bay and Kansas City. Yeah, but that's but, they, but, they would be disappointed with that game. By the way. They'd be well, yeah. disappointed with that game. They want that because the week building up, they can talk about Rodgers and Mahomes. But but I'm going to tell you, the matchup they want is the 49ers and the Chiefs. That that would be the better game. 
That will, that will be it. Because if you want an outstanding game for four and a half hours where everybody in the world is watching your TV and actually caring, that and here's what's so stupid. I don't understand why they care more about the name and the storylines beforehand and not so much about a quality of a game. Because the, it really bothers me that they don't care so much about the quality of the game. Well, because the the names involved bring in viewers. I disagree with the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl brings in the biggest numbers every year, no matter what. Agreed. But if if you can like if you get Green Bay, it's going to give a little bit of a bump. Okay, so let's say it's the three hundred thousand bump that yeah, but LSU. No, but, but, but Green you know Bay what I'm is, is worth like a couple. Three, four million I dis- more. We I, we completely disagree there because you're still getting an iconic franchise that has just a big of a national following in the 49ers. Maybe so. You've got your Bill Walsh and your Joe Montana's, and I guarantee you, Joe Montana's at that game. Steve Youngs, Jerry Rice's. You're gonna bring yeah, all so. those guys out. I'm telling you, it's just as big, if not bigger, than Green Bay. It, Forty the 49ers have not been good in. Nope. Two decades. But that's what makes it matter. That's what makes it important, the fact that they haven't been there. I mean, you might be right. Because Aaron Rodgers is there every year. And guess what? Ever since he's won the Super Bowl, he's below 500 in playoff games. That's a good point. And that's that's, that's with this year's uh, win. That's with yeah. the win last week. He's still below 500. Yeah. Is what it is. We'll see. We will see. All right. That is going to wrap it up for the NFC and AFC title game previews and spread picks. Uh, you can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure that you leave a nice review. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. You can find more information on all their sports books, their steakhouses, their golf courses, uh, the shows they got coming to town, everything else over at tunicatravel.com. Uh, we will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.